Hello and welcome to another video from Sustenance and Covering, the only YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today we're going to talk about a water storage uh, eco-friendly science experiment that I have been doing for about 20 years now and this is my last and final attempt. I finally just figured out if I was going to do something about water storage, I better do it in a structure that can't be damaged by a water leak. All right. When we built this greenhouse, we built it around our already existing water pumping system. There's our well and, and pump. There's a storage tank. And that white pipe, PVC pipe going up, actually feeds a little experiment project I got here. It runs under this shelf. Comes on up under here. There's a valve that cuts it off. And that feeds this deep sink. Deep sink is brown because uh, we have a lot of iron. Uh, under this place here and uh, it shows up in our water Going through the shelf you can see the piping hooks into a 35 gallon food grade Drum plastic drum. It was used for uh, I think uh, sprite or something like that for syrup for sprite and There's the, the pipe at the bottom is the one that actually brings the water into the drum and It's the one that drains the water out of the drum the top pipe is actually an overflow because this is cannot be a pressurized system. It can only be gravity feed. <clears throat> so if you were to put, I don't know, I think it's 42 pounds of pressure on this drum, it would probably just blow the top off of it. It wouldn't hold that. But anyways, here we go. I'm going to do a little experiment right now for you just so you can see what goes on and you can make your own decisions whether or not you want to attempt something like this. I'm going to go ahead and feed some water into that drum. I don't know if you can see the line in there. You cannot put 35 gallons of water in a 35 gallon drum laying on its side. Okay, it's overflowing now. Water coming out. Everything's going fine. Ain't no leaks where they don't belong. But when we turn the water off, watch what happens here. See, a, a drum, <coughs> we always think about a drum as being rigid. But it's just a big bag. If you can see that, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty bent. But anyways, when it starts to, once, once the air can get back in it, and the water stops coming out of that overflow and air gets back in it, it kind of goes back to its original shape. Actually, just sitting on that cradle I built uh, with a full load in it, it's always just a little bit, uh, you know, wobbly. But uh, that's not an issue because we're out here in the greenhouse and nothing out here can be damaged by water. I come out here and spray everything down at water when I'm watering my plants. But this deck down here is actually a wooden deck over a three foot deep pit. And all the concrete in here was uh, poured, formed up and poured so that it had a drop to it. So when I'm watering plants, the water doesn't run out underneath the greenhouse. It actually comes into this center and goes out a drain in the back. Okay, now we stopped flowing over, and there goes the drum, going back to its best it can to the shape it's supposed to be in, slowly but surely. But anyways, the first experiment I did this uh, to was up here in my house. You see them, them windows across the top? That is not a, a room up there. That's actually the attic space. We're going to go inside and take a look at that right now. Stairs. I already got my ladder down for the attic. And there you go. All in all, that's five of them there. Five 35 gallon drums. Uh, 30 gallons actual useful storage in each one. So that's uh, 150 gallons, which uh, comes out to 1,200 pounds of water. Now the the cradles are pretty stout, and when I built the house, I made sure to form that up. Uh, the floor joists in there, or a two by sixes. I know that's not much bigger than what you normally have anyway, but 
and they're on six, 16 inch centers. But uh, if those things had ruptured on me or if while deforming they were to pull apart and break them pipes, I'd have trouble up here. So the tanks are always empty. Now, if we were to get a message like a hurricane is coming, then I would just go ahead and fill them up. You know, it wouldn't be an issue. But I just don't feel safe having it all the time filled up. Maybe one day I'll change my mind, but I don't have any insurance on this place. And even if I did and them tanks ruptured, then I have to explain why my ceiling caved in from water tanks in my attic. Those are just black lights up there. I did that for showing off. Sometime at night I'll light all them black lights up and it looks really cool through the windows. <clears throat> but these are tied in. I Actually, when I built a house, I went ahead and framed in uh, a couple of pieces of PVC going up from the from the water heater on the first floor all the way up into the attic. So in an emergency, all I have to do is turn the, the valve off that brings water from the well and turn the valve on that brings water from these tanks. And these tanks would actually even uh, bring water out to the greenhouse since we have a sewer grinder. If we really wanted to take a shower, we'd have to take showers out in that greenhouse, which that's where I've been showering for the last couple of years anyway. Oh, well, that's it. If you got any questions about this experiment or suggestions, you can let me know. It's not really a failed, uh, failed water storage system. It'll work, but I just don't feel comfortable leaving it up here all the time. But I, I think just about anything, even uh, when the economy collapses or they start rounding up Muslims and sending them off to concentration camps or whatever, if I see something that just don't seem right, I'll fill these tanks up before uh, everything goes south.